Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on this blustery, I guess not blustery, just chilly December day. And we are definitely in the time of the year when the sun basically rises and sets in the south. Because that's east, there's the sun, look at that. And I think it'll sort of peak right around there, as I recall. It does not get very high in the sky. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the questions I answered from you guys in the last episode. This episode, we're going to bring things closer to home. And yes, I, uh, I gave the trees a bit of a shearing here. Today's episode is going to be all about animals. Which makes me realize I should go and check on these guys, make sure they're all still here. That the bears haven't gotten them. Hey, I can see them running around. Okay. Perfect. I was doing some thinking about today's episode and how I wanted to approach it because, as I mentioned during the 20 questions segment last episode, we don't quite have the tools yet that we need to build our forever home. This little tiny home is, well, it's served us quite well, but it is getting quite small, as you can see by the cramped storage I've added up here by the ceiling and the storage we're going to add to the basement today. And so we are going to build this forever home soon-ish. I think we'll probably start it before spring thaw. We'll see how that goes. But so I was wondering if I should try to put the animals where they're going to end up permanently, or just sort of get them in a temporary barn. And I think we're going to put them in a temporary barn. But we aren't going to skimp on the details. I mean, granted, we have sort of limited detail work we can do with the tools that we have. Although we do have access to a chisel now. But... I think what we're going to do is first, we're going to head down and get some materials because I want to build a barn that has a deep dark red base and a dark dark roof and then use some brighter colors in between. I'm not sure if I want to use sandstone yet or maybe like birch wood, but we can figure that as we go. However, in order to get dark stone for the roof, we're going to have to go underground where we know there is some slate. And there's some slate right under this little waypoint right here where there's marble because marble occurs in slate and we've also seen the slate with our eyeballs so that is part of today's plan we're going to go and get some materials we're going to show you how to capture animals and then we're going to start breeding them and it's important to get breeding going on relatively early if you can because it's not a fast process and the longer you domesticate your animals, the more generations you have, the tamer they get, the less likely they are to attack you by accident, and also the more produce or meat and fat they'll give you. So you want to get that started early on. If this wasn't a sort of step-by-step -step slower guide series, I'd probably already have a small pen or trap with animals, maybe not a fully built barn, but if you're playing by yourself, I recommend getting animals going on in your first year, preferably before winter, though. I think we're going to set up some storage here before we even go. So what I'm thinking is we're going to be getting a lot of small stones and a lot of... because I am going to quarry out the stone, and I think we're going to want to store them somewhere very space-efficient and easy to use. And unfortunately, trunks are actually not the most space-efficient storage we have. There is another storage option, similar to these aged crates, and that they are crates that are not aged. Go figure. These are... well, I'll show you how they work. We'll start with the aged crates. So an aged crate, or any crate, is a single item storage container. If we were to take, say, some granite stones, and we'll take some clay stone stones, we can right click we can shift and right click and we will add these stones one by one to the crate. We can also crouch and sprint right click and right click to add an entire stack. However, if we take something else, we can't also add it to this container because it is designed for holding granite stone right now. We have to take the stone out before we can put anything else in. And again, if you right click while not crouching, you'll pull things out. If you sprint right-click while not crouching, you pull a whole stack out. Now, there are two reasons why we're not going to use the aged crates. One is that we can sell them, and I need to go sell a couple of these, 
to traders for a pretty decent sum. And so these are actually sort of money to me. These just, they speak to me. They say money. And also, these have 16 storage slots. That actually isn't any better than a regular chest like this. A non-aged crate of most wood types has 20 slots. And they're made like this. So first you're going to take four boards in a square like this, and you need two birch planks like this, or planks of whatever wood you're making it out of. And then you build your crate like this, and it has 20 storage slots. So this is actually even a little bit more efficient than a trunk, by basically two slots per square, or per block. And I'm going to make two of these. In fact, I'm going to make two each of the birch, and two each of the maple, and I miscounted on how many boards I need. There we go. So we're going to need some more maple as well, I believe. And we now have two birch and two maple crates. We're going to go ahead and take these downstairs, and we're going to store our slate stones in one of these, and we'll do, say, the birch, which will go right here and there. And in the maple, we will store any of the marble stones and blocks that we may get. So we have stones and blocks, stones and blocks. Now, you can label these. I don't happen to have any labels, and I'm not interested in finding them right now. The agriculture trader may sell them, but they don't have any right now. I went and checked earlier before the episode started. So, we don't have any labels for these. We'll have to know that these are what I said they are, and we'll have to guess or read the tooltip on top. All right, I think that's about it. I'm gonna make some preparations and we're gonna go and minus out some slate and probably some marble because I wanna just start getting some of that for future projects. All right, folks, here we go. We are going to head right over to our little spot here. And rather than messing around with trying to find the place again, we do the cheaty way. We dig straight down, that's right. Here we go, we got some chert, and this is actually one of the things I wanted to do, and maybe I should go ahead and make another set of crates when we get back. I want to use some polished chert as the base of these temporary barns, or barn. I haven't decided yet on exactly what structure I'll be using, but we'll get there. So I want some chert, so we'll need to quarry some of this out. And then I'm going to come down here and we're going to get deep enough to get to the slate. And we have some slate. And I think I want to grab some marble while we're here. Oh, there we go. And we have Growly Boys. Let's get down here. We're going to go ahead and just wall this off a little bit. That's not walls. There we go. And this is pretty much already walled off. Perfect. So, we can probably go ahead and get to the diggins. I'm going to light this up a little bit just to keep any further creepy crawlies at bay. I'm going to use the same quarrying method that I showed you in a previous episode when we were talking about how to survive winter. We're going to quarry it probably in this direction, because I want to sort of catch both the chert and the slate, and maybe the marble. So, yep. All we do is we pick our starting location, and we're going to start, oh, uh, here. And we just dig a very long line, very slowly, because we have a very slow pickaxe. And what we'll do is then we will come two blocks, well, three blocks over this direction, and we'll dig a second row, and there's a random water in that block. I love it. Never change, game, never... What? <laughs> what is this? What even is this? And once that's all done, we will come through here, and I'm actually going to dig up this little block. And now water's flowing. This will be interesting. And we just dig out 
a zigzag pattern that will become a checkerboard pattern. And then on this side, we dig out the opposite checkerboard pattern. And there goes the water. And like that, it is gone. So, yep, now we have some slate stones and some slate rock. More stones than rock, of course. Also have this random piece of muddy gravel, which is going to reside here forever and ever. And I'm going to go ahead and just quarry out a whole bunch of stone this direction. I might dig down a little bit to sort of see how deep our marble goes, and also to get some of that dug up. And then I will bring all of you back in a bit when we are ready to start our little barn. We don't need a ton of resources here, so I'm not going to spend too, too long. But if I did need more, I could just dig, again, three blocks this way and over, and start another row of this exact same pattern. Alternatively, you can also just dig down, as long as what you want is down or up, alternately, I guess. So, we have a couple things to do with our newfound materials. I'm going to put some of this away. Some of it will go down here. And I think I'm going to make another set of crates, probably made of, like, oak, just to have a different color. But we're going to go ahead and we'll store a little of the slate in here and the chert in here. And same thing, we'll do the slate stones in here and the chert stone, or I guess rock, right in there. Okay, yep, and I will see all of you in a little bit when this is ready, and we're going to talk about what we need to make in order to process these stones into something different. Alright, all of our stone is away in our basement. It is time for me to get to something that I need to do. That is, we're going to make a chisel, and I kind of also need a new shovel. I I made a granite shovel, and boy, do I hate it. So, you know, I'm going to go and put it down here in our burninating pit, where it'll burn, or it'll despawn, whichever. Oh, and I did find another brown coal vein right by one of the traders and the translocators, so I went ahead and just mined that out while I was there. Normally, I would just cast a shovel, but since I'm already going to be making a chisel, I figured we may as well go ahead and we'll smith a shovel as well. Now, chisels are a... oops, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you go? As I was saying, chisels <laughs> are a very simple pattern to follow. There are only three voxels that actually need attention here. Everything else is just splitting. That was easy. And shovels aren't a whole lot harder. Reason being, you can actually use the heavy hit feature to get started really easily. So you just hit here and here, and you're pretty much halfway done. The rest of it is just pulling these up. If you don't miss. And this one down. And pushing these guys up. and then splitting the rest. And there we go. And when you get into iron and beyond, and you can no longer cast metals, that pattern will become very familiar to you. Now, let's get a piece of... Oops, if I can get down here. Let's get a piece of this chert out of here. 
back. We'll just start with one for now to show you what this looks like. So, we will need the hammer back, actually. And we're going to pop this chert down onto a piece of dirt. If you are messing around with stone and you want to see what it looks like, make sure you put it on a block that's easy to break and is not another irreplaceable stone block. Otherwise, you'll end up just breaking your stone. So, this is chert unpolished. It's a nice color. It's not particularly vibrant, though. However, if we take this and we put it in our crafting grid with a chisel on top and a hammer above that, we can get polished chert. And this is easier to deal with. We can put this right on the ground. And when we're done looking at it and admiring it just how much more vibrant that color is, we can then pick it up with a pickaxe like, you know, normal folk do. So yes, this is, I think, I think I want to make a little ring of this around the base of our barn for our creatures. And we have just shy of a stack, so that does limit the maximum size of our barn quite a bit. So we're going to want to make sure we measure that out. I want to put it out there on the plane. And probably do like a small outdoor section that I can access, or maybe just a outdoor but enclosed with, with tall fences. And then the indoor parts with the animals will be much more heavily protected because we don't want the bears and wolves getting to them. Bears will go after the hogs and sheep, and of course wolves will go after the chickens. So with this in mind, I'm going to put this up here for now. But with this information in mind, I think it's time that we get out here and we at least lay out the design of our future barn. I'm going to bring along some packed dirt for that. And I think I'll make a little bit more with this. And that should do. And that way we can sort of lay out the interior and exterior parts of the barn. And we'll figure it out from there. Alright everyone, let's get ourselves out here and get to work. And it's actually been about half a day between the last clip and this one. And I had some time to sleep on it and think about what I want to do for our barn. I was kind of considering, like, you know, sure we can come out here and build a temporary, hello, temporary barn anywhere we want, but I was thinking, you know, do we want to tear it down later? Do we want to leave it here? If we leave it here, is it just kind of useless? So I was thinking, we have this agriculture trader over here, and, hey buddy, yeah, and agriculture equals farmer, right? Or rancher, maybe? One of the two? Or both? So I was thinking, what if we put the barn right over here and maybe even built, like, I don't know, a little carport for him? Or her? Or them? I don't know. Anyway, I thought that could be kind of fun. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to first figure out just how wide of a berth we need to have here for the carport. I think we can go... Yeah, I think we can go one block away. Yeah, we can't build here. And the land claim around the merchant is... Oh, wow. Very tight. How about on the back side? Also one block. Okay. So we can actually build a little carport with, like, the supports, say... Well, maybe, I guess, here. So we can build a carport and have it just be sort of like this. Maybe even not quite that wide. And get rid of this piece of dirt here. And this could also be, like, the back of our barn. Well, this is a little bit bigger than I was intending to make. This is, what, one, two, three, four, sixteen blocks. I was going to do, like, a little L-shaped barn, but I guess we could just do, like, a longer barn. It's no really harm in that, I guess. And you know what? If we're doing that, then why don't we just shorten it by a block and just have a bit of overhang on either side of the cart. That way we have a 14 block wide barn. That's going to be tricky to do the math, but I'll figure out how wide we're going to make things. Because I'm going to have three different sections for the animals. We're going to do the chickens, we're going to do pigs, and we're going to do sheep. That's all the animal types that you can domesticate in the game. And it's just easier if you have them separated into three sections, one for each animal type. So, that's what we're going to do. Oh, we should also figure out how tight the claim is up here. Oh, sweet. Okay, well, that's easy. 
Oh, I'm stuck. I guess the question is, can I put one there? No, it is a rectangular prism land claim. Okay. Well, that actually makes that very, very easy, and this gives us plenty of vertical space for our barn. So let me do some real quick math here. We're going to do outer wall and outer wall. That gives us 12 blocks, and if we separate it into fours, one, two, three, four, and it's a little small. So I guess we go for the 16. There we go. So we now have three equal sized bays, four blocks each. And then we have one block in between. We have a, what, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven block tall land claim, or six block tall land claim on the merchant here. And yeah, that's pretty good actually. Okay, so the next thing to do is we need to clear out some of this shrubbery around here and just make it a little cleaner. One, so that we can get the animals in. Two, so we can build a little more easily. And three, so that we have visibility of wolves if they encroach on our territory here. Okay, that's pretty well done for now. And next up, we need to go ahead and figure out the actual dimensions of the barn. I think I want the interior parts to be 4x4 four four sections and probably just a couple blocks high. Now, I'm going to leave room for the roof, a tallish roof, because the way that I like to work is when I have animals, I like to be able to get up above them, and typically... Two blocks won't quite cut it. We need probably a half block, like a slab here, that I can walk on above the animals. And that way I can use a spear and stab down the animals. Or if I have a butcher's knife, then I can use that as well. Usually by sitting and using the butcher's knife. But that only works on animals that have already been domesticated to a certain point. But the 4x4 gives us just enough room to get a couple generations of animals bred here and also have room for their troughs, which we'll need to keep full of grain and other goodies for them. And of course, most importantly, it kind of conserves our limited resources because we are still in the Copper Age, so getting lots of resources is still kind of a slow grind. I mean, Vintage Story never gets that fast, but it's it's really painful right now. So, so we're going to do 4x4 four four cells here. Talking like they're prisons. I mean, they are, kind of. And we will have basically just sort of across the front here like this. We are going to be using solid blocks for all of the animal pens. Now we can also use vertical slabs, but if we do, we want to make sure that the solid face is butted up against all the blocks that the animals can come in contact with. And that's because when animals load in, when you load the world, and when they are born or when they grow up from being a baby to an adult, they have a tendency to mess with the space-time continuum and end up phasing on the other side of non-solid blocks. Like if they start their life inside the airspace of a half block, they are likely to get shunted outside that block. And same with fences. I see chickens getting close too. We are going to have an outside area for us to do whatever business we need to do, which is mostly feeding the animals. So I'm thinking we'll do a little bit of an area like this outside here. And this might be enclosed, it might not be. This is getting a little bigger than I wanted to completely roof, so I might just do like a real long thin barn here with a roof, and then have this be open to the air, but with fences. Tall, tall fences. And what I want to do is, I've learned a bit of a lesson from last season, which is that having your animal troughs in a place where you have to sort of like stand above the animals and reach down into the troughs, is kind of a pain. So what I want to do is I want to put the troughs basically here across the front and just sort of cover them up like this with blocks and then we can use a new block that we haven't talked about yet which is a trap door to close up the troughs just in case any of the animal babies end up slipping out. Okay with that I think it's time for us to get to business with getting some of the materials in here and actually starting the build. Alright, so the first order of business is going to be laying down our polished chert. Now we have just the one at the moment. And what I'm kind of thinking is, we'll do the polished chert like this, just around the bottom edge. 
And then in the corners here, you have some kind of pillars of wood. Now, I'm not certain yet whether I want to do maple, which has a nice contrast in terms of we have a nice cool kind of bluish gray along with the warm red. Or do I like birch better? Let's find out. Hmm. Do you know, I think I like the maple better because I want to put some kind of lighter colored interior bits here. So let's just, as an example, I guess we'll just uh, throw you on the ground. As an example, let's go ahead and just put some birch planks up. So I want to do something like this. It might not be birch. I might actually want to do some sandstone cobble instead. I think sandstone and chert go really well together. While it wouldn't look bad if I did the birch with the birch log, I don't think I'd be unhappy, honestly. But I don't like the bright color for the corners. I kind of like to have a nice dark anchoring color here to be like, this is the end of the build. So I think that's what we'll do. We're going to go ahead and chop this down with the axe that I totally know where it is. We're also going to chop these down because I brought the wood along for something else. And if you've been paying attention, then you probably know what that is. You might want to note that you can use your saw to break down both your slabs and your four block or four board planks back into the boards with a saw. So what we're going to do here is I want to make some troughs and put them right here. Now troughs are very simple to make and we're going to make four large ones and four small ones. So we're going to do like this and you get a trough. One, two, three, four. There we go. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to put them right here. And they're going to go like that and like that. And so this is where, say, the sheep or the hogs will reside. And we will be able to just fill these from here. And then we'll do the same thing for the animals that we are living right here. Whether that's sheep or hogs, we don't quite know yet. It's sort of whichever one decides to trap itself there first. So there we have that. And then for the chickens, I am still going to have this be open here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these troughs right here. And small troughs are made like this, in a little sort of a V shape. And we'll just do them, you know, we'll do them the other direction. These can be placed directionally, so like that. There we go. And we'll also need some hen boxes for the hens to lay their eggs in. Now, hens will lay their eggs basically all over the ground if you let them. And those eggs won't be fertilized. Those are for eating. And yes, you can eat their fertilized eggs too if you want. However, in order to actually get more chickens, you need to have hen boxes where the hens can lay their eggs and then roost on them. So we're going to make four hen boxes as well. And those are also quite simple. We just need some grass. And we'll get some of that with a knife. Oh, I have a knife right here. I'll just break you anyway. Oh, interesting. Breaking the grass with a knife doesn't actually let you pick it up if there's snow on it. So hen boxes, as I recall, are simply like this. There we go. And these will go right across the back here. And I generally won't mess with these. I'll probably pick up whatever eggs are on the ground here and eat them. But these are for our chickens to reproduce, so we're not going to mess with those. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to get most of the rest of this in. We have a calm night for now that may change before morning. I hope it doesn't. But I'm going to go and get some more maple logs. We have the trees over there that need to be cut down. And we're also going to put down some of these shirt polished rocks. So I say, let's get to it. And that is our cue. It is time to go and hide inside. We're going to get ready for this temporal storm, which should hit during the day. So, provided the weather isn't too bad, we might get to see Dave this time. 
I'm going to warm up, I'm going to get ready for the storm, and then I'll see all of you in a little bit. Alright folks, our temporal storm is imminent, and since it is a few degrees lower than what our clothes can handle, I did go ahead and repair our clockmaker shirt, which should help us stave off the chill a little bit longer out here, as long as we stay relatively dry. So hopefully we'll get here to see some Dave in a moment. I don't want to stay in the snow too long because the snow will make you wet just like rain or being in water. It does take a few minutes to go from dry to slightly wet to wet to soaking wet, but still. And after the storm I will show you the spoils of it, but I probably won't record what goes on during the storm because it is another light storm. And here we go, so if you have any motion sick issues just look away now. And up we go. Let's see. Can we spot Dave? Oh, how did you get up here? You should not be able to do that. You can spawn there. Oh, that's mean. Oh, I don't like that. I thought you couldn't spawn there. Anyway, can I get up on this thing, please? Here we go. Ooh, we have a nightmare drifter coming in. Oh, I don't see Dave. Well... We are just out of luck with Dave. We are never going to see him. <laughs> It'll have to be a temporal storm where it's not snowy, rainy, foggy, or night. So, we'll see him in summer, maybe. Alright, I'm going to go and deal with the storm, and then we'll get back on track with the barn. Get back here. Well, everyone, we made it through the storm, and boy, one, it was a pretty long one, not super duper long. I think they kept out at about 10 hours, but I think this was about 6 or 8. Anyway, let me show you what we got, because oh boy, was this an all-you-can-eat buffet. We had two double-headed drifters pop up, and then a whole bunch of corrupt nightmare, I think one nightmare, a bunch of corrupt and a bunch of tainted drifters, and I even got a temporal gear from a regular old deep drifter. But I didn't just get one. I also didn't just get two. That's right, we got four temporal gears, 15 rusty gears, and 13 flex fibers, all from that one temporal storm. So, lesson to you, on occasion, yes, you'll get low temporal storms where you don't get much out of them, but these things can really bring in the temporal gears. And this means we can actually go ahead, and not this episode, but in a future, hopefully soon one, we can go and activate both of the other translocators that we know about, which is pretty awesome. And we have some more spending change, too. But I'm going to go ahead and put these away and get ready for tomorrow by making another meal. And then we'll get back to work on the barn. Also note, apparently, drifters can spawn on fire pits. They can't spawn on stones you place in the ground, but they can spawn on fire pits. So don't put fire pits anywhere in or near your drifter pen. Note to self. <laughs> Oh, and before we go, you'll notice that, and I also remarked about it in a previous episode, but the nights are now getting quite long. In fact, it was already dark by about, what, 5.15 tonight? And these seven-hour hay beds don't quite cut it, because we wake up, and it's still dark. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to retire this for the winter, we'll get it back out for the summer, but we're going to make a better bed. And they stacked two, apparently. Now, you can find better beds, but we haven't found one yet, and so we're going to make one. And it's actually quite simple. The only thing you need in addition to hay is a piece of linen and some boards. So we're going to grab... Let's do these maple boards. Now, you know what? We'll do the birch boards. And you need to put some boards across the bottom here. Oh, wait. You make your mattress first. So you start out like you're going to make a hay bed, but then you fake out the crafting grid and you put your linen like this and some boards across the bottom and you need two at each slot there by the way and you get a wooden bed we can now sleep for up to eight and a half hours a day so not going to get us through the entire dark period at night but it'll get us through at least a bit more of it but we'll go ahead and put our bed with our head on this end away from the quern i guess not really sure why it matters and now once our meal is done i'm going to sleep and we'll make it morning again Okay, folks, all that excitement is over, and you'll hear I am a little noisy today. I have my armor on, because it is a medium day, and I kind of fully expect drifters to come crawling out of every hole 
in the landscape here and come after us while we're working there. It might not happen, but just in case it does, I want to be prepared. Ooh, we have a ram getting close, even though we have nothing in our little trough area here. Oh well. Well, let's get back to work. What I want to do next is we are going to build a little outside area. No. No, we're not. We need to get the animals in here before we build our little outside area for ourselves. So, what we're going to do is we're going to first figure out whether we want to do sandstone or birch. So we're going to just knock off some of this here. And we're going to make some sandstone slabs. Some cobble sandstone slabs. And we're going to make a few of the birch slabs. There we go. Birch and sandstone. So, let's see. Do we like the birch? It's not bad. I think it's a little bit plain. And not as saturated as, say, the sandstone is going to be. And why did you do that? I swear I put you vertical. Vertical, 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 vertical. Oh, yeah. It isn't even a contest. Sandstone all the way. All right. Okay, so we're going to come in here, and we're just going to put these slabs all along here, including right here. And yes, I'm too lazy to get my shovel out. Can I put you... No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Oh, if I put you on top of the snow, it works. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so there we have the back and side walls. Now we need the front walls, and we don't have enough sandstone for the front walls or to finish the job here. And that's why, this is the second reason that I'm wearing my armor, is that we need to go downstairs, and by downstairs I mean underground, and we need to watch the snow <laughs> be silly, and we need to go and mine us some more sandstone. And I think we'll do it from, there's a cave over here, if I can find it again without falling in. Is it you? Uh, no, it's not you. I don't think it is. There's a shallower one over here. Maybe not. We could do you, but I know you... Oh, we can't do you. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just quarry some of this out. So I'll see all of you in a little bit when we have some sandstone. Okay, so... I lied about quarrying. I ended up just sort of preparing the quarry for later filling. I see we don't have any males with a female nearby. That's okay, though, because we basically have our trap just about set here. We're not going to get all the sandstone covered. Oh, well, that's fine. But let's go ahead and we're going to fill this in. And I think what we'll do here, since we don't really care about the animals, and their environment as much, visually, I mean. I care about the animals, certainly. But I think they're not going to care about the walls we have here, so we're just going to use some of these, and I might go ahead and make some more of these birch planks. And we're going to go and just do a bit of this with them for separators. I don't like the vertical planks. I always hate that. They always go vertical and plant them on the ground. So, with these birch planks, kind of like with the slabs, their orientation depends on the side of the block that you're facing. So if you put them vertically, they'll appear vertical. Put them horizontally on the side of a the block, they'll come out horizontal. And I like that look quite a bit more. There we go. I'm going to go and get some more planks, fill these in, and then we'll talk about how to lure the animals in. As we have been harvesting our flax, we've been keeping this flax grain in here. And I've always called it junk food, and garbage to your food, and whatever other nasty things I tend to call it. And it's true, it is pretty terrible food, but it is also useful. And the reason, let's drop you there, the reason is that it is really handy for animal feed. Because animals don't really care about the satiation in food, they care about just the food, that they got a portion of it. Because in order to breed or fatten your animals up, they need to eat. 
So let's go out here. We're going to take a look over this way at some of these animals out here. Here we go. Here's a likely looking feller, nor the raccoon. So this ram, his weight is low. That's because he hasn't been able to eat. It's winter. There's no food on the ground. I mean, there is, but the game says there isn't. And so we can fatten them up by feeding them grain. And we're going to do that by creating a way in, but they can't get out once they're in here. And also, pro tip, if you are doing anything special with the floor, make sure you do it before you get your animals in. I think we're just going to leave this as, like, grass for now. And probably forever, because we're really not going to see the inside of this too much. So I don't really care that much about the appearance. And right, we're going to do this. these animals are going to smell this delicious, delicious food, and they're going to want to come and eat it. Now, we want to filter these guys. We don't want the hogs and the sheep ending up together in the same pen, because it just gets a bit messy. So we're going to put in a bit of a filter. And over top of these, right here, we're going to put these, because this is closest to those hogs over there. Now we're going to try to lure them over. And hogs can fit through a one block wide, one block tall specifically, gap. Sheep cannot. Chickens can also fit through a one block wide gap. So we're going to go ahead and do that here, just so that if the rams come over, they don't have a chance of end up falling in in here. We're going to temporarily replace these with some dirt. And since the chickens will always run really nearly from us, we can stand here and replace the dirt afterward. We're going to go and make it morning, and then we'll get back on track with getting animals in here. Okay, we are back to a calm day. Well, at least temporally speaking. And it is time for us to go ahead and we're going to fill up all of these troughs with flax grain. Now, each serving in a large trough is two grain. So, two troughs will be 32. And four troughs will make a neat stack. And this will entice animals in a relatively large radius. I think it's something like, hello, 40 blocks or so. Good night. Now, for chickens, in the small trough, a single piece of grain is one serving of food. So we just fill up these guys. And that's how you make a stack and a half of flax grain disappear in an instant. So now... We mostly wait. Now you see how they're kind of pathing over here? Look at that. They are all... They're all coming over. That is perfect. So we're just going to get out of the way, and we're going to let them come over. Look at that. Yep, they are already smelling that food. That's right, but we need to get rid of this block up here, just so the sheep can't accidentally end up in the wrong spot. There we go. Yeah, and they'll kind of they'll kind of wander. They won't always path directly toward the food. If they don't, there are ways of enticing them from even farther away, namely by making more troughs and basically daisy chaining them. So there's basically a breadcrumb trail between where we want them to be and where they are. And I brought along some more boards to do that, but it doesn't seem like we're going to need it. I want to sneak over here and see if there are any chickens lurking around. I'm not seeing any chickens, so I think they are headed in the direction that we want. Now, I could have sworn there were more pigs here, but I don't see any. And maybe the bears got them. But yeah, so we'll come back in a little bit, and we should, in general, find that the chickens and everything else have sorted themselves out. I believe that's a chicken up there. Oh, that's a rabbit. Never mind. So there they go. They're all wandering up. They're trying to figure out... Oh, they might end up getting into... Oh, there's a pig. 
There's a boar, okay. We need a sow, too. Are you a sow? You are. Oh, perfect. So maybe you will smell the food. Let's see. Hey, we got some chickens in here. Do we have... We have a rooster and a hen, I think. No, we have two hens. Are you both hens? Yes, we need a rooster in here. So we'll have to see if we can chase one from elsewhere. Now, the sheep and the pigs aren't going to mind us as much. They are happy to make their way up here. This is going so much better than the first season, let me tell you. If you've seen the first season, you know what I'm talking about. The females follow the males, and it can take them a while to sort of figure out where the food is, because they don't path to the food like the males do, unless they don't have an attached male. And that, my friends, is how you capture animals. Okay, so I lied slightly. I did not go back to the house. I spent a little while chasing some animals around. It wasn't as big an ordeal as it was last season. But I noticed as I was doing so that there was a rooster trying to get in over here. And it was having trouble getting in, so I helped it in. And now these guys are pretty well sealed off. If a bear came along, which it probably won't, it's a bit far for bears to come this way, then it could get in. The pigs are still coming. They are on the way. However, we have some moochers here, namely three bighorn rams in here and one over there, and we need to get rid of most of them. I want to get rid of all but one of them. That's going to involve uh, some spears, actually. And the reason that we need to get some spears involved, here are the pigs, is that we need to keep them from eating all of the food, which they will do. All the animals will pretty much happily eat whatever food's in front of them, but the males aren't useful beyond the first one. So we're going to smack one of them with this guy until it runs away. And then you are both decent, so we're going to smack you. Yeah, you can't quite reach me. There we go. So now we have just the sheep that we want eating our food. And we have the pigs that are on the way. I have to probably get rid of this snow here. We have that ram in there too. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to just remove this filter here. Just in case the pigs have trouble with it. We're going to have to smack this ram and deal with him too. But this will give us plenty of meat and fat. And if we dare, grab the bones too. Although I'm kind of full on inventory space at the moment. And while I was busy harvesting this ram here, both our boar and our sow hopped in here, so we are good to take down our little steps here. And now we have a barn full of animals, sort of. We have a pen full of animals that could still be attacked by wolves or bears. So in the morning, we will start dealing with that. Or actually, I might work on it at night here. This is nice and calm. And what's going to happen is we're going to keep these troughs full. We're going to try to, apparently. And each male only needs to eat once in order to mate. However, each female must eat ten times. So we are going to burn through probably most of our flax pretty quickly before we get any offspring out of this. But we are on our way. I don't typically put the chickens and the other animals together because you can end up spooking the chickens. But since this is pretty far from where we're living, it shouldn't be as big of a problem. So, I'm going to go and put away this meat and all this other stuff, and then we will come back and keep working on our barn.
All right, everyone, here we go. From a functional perspective, this barn is pretty well ready to roll. We have the animals, we have their space to do their thing, we have the very chatty merchant over there, we have their feed, and we have the hen boxes. Oh, we have three fertile eggs. Wow. Very nice. Now, hens work differently than these guys in that the hens must be fed in order to brood, and then when they're fed, they will sit on their eggs. Other animals only need food to get pregnant, and then once they're pregnant, they are good until they have their babies, and then you... Well, you tell them that you're taking their mother somewhere. Somewhere safe and happy. Yep. Safe and happy. Now, before we get too much farther, I think it's time for us to go and talk about the roof. And the reason that I went downstairs, downstairs being down into our little quarry with the slate and the marble earlier, was that I want to use some slate roof. And I realized that I used slate roof on the first season of the Vintage Story Guide's first barn. But since we already used the blue clay roofing here, I wanted to use the slate roofing just to be a bit different again from at least this build here. So where did I put the slate? Right downstairs. So here we go. We have 338 slate stones. I do hope this is enough for what we need. If it's not, well, we have more pickaxes, so we'll make it less of a problem. Now the slate roofing is real nice because it looks honestly better than the shingled roofing, at least in my opinion. And it's very easy to make, as long as you can get slate stones. So in order to make these roofs, all you really need is a bit of slate stone and some blue clay. Now it is kind of resource intensive, so when you go to make this, make sure you are looking at how many you get. Yeah, this might be a bit tight. We'll see how far we get with this. So I think we're going to just get on up here and we'll start with this bit of overhang that we'll have here and make our way across the whole build and the same thing on this side if we can okay so this is the side that's going to be different which is fine so let's go ahead and we'll just pick this one back up and we're going to take this to the middle and we'll set up down to here where we'll do something a bit different with the carport Right, and here we go with our lanterns. Let's put one, let's see. Let's put them like here and here. I am gonna leave this here. I'm not sure how I wanna handle it. I might come back with a chisel later when we get into chiseling and find some way to make this connect a little bit better than the way it does now. But for now, this is just sort of our easy cheesy way in and out. Anyway, here is our finished build in the light. I kind of like that it has sort of like a, a lopsided shape to it. It has like a witch's hat style roof here, and then it has like a wing over here, and I kind of like that. I think it's pretty cute. And now our trader's wagon is well protected from the elements. Anyway, that is about it for animals. I hope you learned something about how to attract and start sheltering and feeding your animals. I should mention the other reason for putting light in here. Now, 
right now, this is actually fine. We could have left the lights out and the animals might have been fine because they have some sunlight access. Maybe not a ton for the pigs, but enough. But animals that don't have any light whatsoever will slowly die. In about two days or so, they'll just despawn. And that's mostly to keep the animals from ending up down in caves and clogging them up. And then you end up with no animals on the surface and tons of lag from animals stuck in caves. But having these here will keep our animals from despawning forever. And we have even more. Do you, do you mind? Well, everyone, that is about all the time we have for this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. Look at those weird bushes over there. I think that's the temperature banding overlay bugging out on them. Very strange. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope you learned something about how to handle animals. And going forward, we're going to have a lot more fat and meat and leather at our disposal. I think in the next couple episodes, I want to get into more alloys, specifically an alloy that will advance us into a new age, the Bronze Age. So we're going to have to go out and find some bismuth, some sphalerite, and or some tin in order to make bronze. And that, of course, means that we'll be able to mine out some quartz, as I had mentioned previously, and that means we'll be able to make glass more reliably and therefore start to work on our new home, our permanent forever home. I hope you're looking forward to that. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.